All right, today we're talking all about phase shift problems in your mix. Phase shift is probably one of the most anxiety-inducing topics for newer engineers especially. But the truth is, is that phase shifts are common. They're happening all the time in your mix. Every great mix has a tiny degree of phase shift going on somewhere, and it's not a problem. Phase shifts are usually so subtle and insignificant that we don't even notice them or we just correct for them without realizing it. And the bottom line is, it's not a problem until it's a problem. Now, you've probably seen all of the terminology and graphics showing you all the science behind phase shift, and I do believe that a thorough knowledge of that stuff is super important, especially if you're doing live sound or you're tracking. If you're trying to record like a drum kit with multiple microphones, you have to have a really good grasp of that. But when it comes to mixing, even a beginner can find and fix phase issues with only a cursory understanding of the terms and definitions. It's totally possible with a little bit of strategy and some tools to know what to listen for, to be able to find it, to know what to do about it and even possibly avoid it altogether. And when you get good at fixing phase issues, you'll no longer be a beginner. So let's begin. So all of those terms and definitions surrounding the phase problems, I'm going to refer to those in this video as just simply issues. But that said, let's establish a distinction between delay, latency, and phase. Now, delay in this context of phase issues is not like the delay on your stomp box. It's usually a much shorter period of time. Now, delay from latency sounds like a sound is out of sync from the rest of the sounds. So if you've ever experienced this when you're recording and you hit the notes on your MIDI keyboard, but it comes out of your monitors slightly delayed, that's latency. Now, delay from a phase shift tends to sound like that the sound is out of sync with itself. Maybe like the high frequencies of a sound are moving at a slower speed than the low frequencies. Take a listen to this kick drum, for example, and take a listen to how the low thud of the kick is out of sync with the high transient of the kick. The other phase problem sounds like some of the frequencies are canceling each other out, or like a buildup of certain frequencies. Like the phase issues you might hear between a kick and a bass. When just the kick is playing, it's fine. When just the bass is playing, it's fine. But when they play together, every once in a while, it seems like someone has hit your bass with a low EQ shelf and taken some of the oomph out of it. That's probably the most common phase issue that we hear, where you have either cancellation or buildup as a result of phase shift problems. But when it comes to the terms of delay, latency and phase, that's what we're talking about here. It either sounds like a buildup or canceling out of certain frequencies, or it sounds like a timing or sync issue. Now, the most common causes of phase issues are recording with multiple microphones, like recording a drum kit. You almost always have phase relation problems between those different microphones, and you can get some canceling out or buildup of frequencies that way, and we'll get to more of that later. Another common cause of phase issues is parallel processing. And I'm not talking about using a dry, wet, or mix knob, but actually using a parallel track. Another common cause of phase issues when you're mixing is simply compounding and aggressive filtering. Too many plugins with too many dramatic adjustments building up on top of each other can make a minor phase issue into a major phase issue. And that's almost always because of the filters. So let's talk about filters for a second. Now here on a standard parametric EQ, each one of these EQ nodes is a filter. And this is technically a multi-band filter, even though it's a regular old parametric EQ because there's multiple bands. And it's the same thing with the multi-band compressor. Each one of these bands, the low, mid, and the high, are all deploying filters. The signal is split by these different filters and then it comes back together in a unified sound, but that act of using filters can cause phase shift. And the two kind of filters that we have to work with are minimum phase and linear phase. Now, minimum phase is what we think of as a standard old compressor or EQ or whatever it is. And here's the main difference between the two kinds of filters. Minimum phase uses phase shift just to work, but do not cause any latency. Everything that you do will cause a little bit of phase shift and you get super aggressive with it, you might cause yourself some problems. That's just how it goes with a normal EQ or multiband compressor. Now, linear phase to not cause any phase shift at all, but the downside behind linear phase is that they also cause some latency. But your DAW is built to auto-correct that. So the DAW will do a little bit of time traveling on the linear phase processing so it lines up. But that comes with one other little pitfall that you gotta watch out for, pre-ringing. 
You've probably all heard pre-ringing, and let me show you what I mean. So this is a regular minimum phase EQ, and if we do a bell curve here, no problem. But if you make this cue too steep and jack it up too high, you'll hear pre-ringing. And you can hear it there following the note around. That extra resonance that this causes by doing too steep and too aggressive of an upwards filter there, that's pre-ringing that you're hearing. And this is one of the main reasons that we don't recommend doing steep, narrow boosts like this with an EQ is because of that pre-ringing factor. Now, we do it all the time with steep and narrow cuts, and this is also causing pre-ringing, but you don't hear it because the rest of the sound is louder than the pre-ringing you're causing because the pre-ringing you're causing is way down towards your noise floor. So that's pre-ringing caused by a regular minimum phase EQ, but the pre-ringing that's caused by a linear phase EQ is caused by the DAW backing the sound up in time to account for the latency. What you want to watch out for with linear phase is what it does to the transients. And the kick drum is a great example. It can sound like you lose some of the thump of your kick drum, and it can almost make the kick drum sound like it's fading in a little bit. Now, most times you could use linear phase EQ and it may take a little bit out of your transient and you can just accommodate for that with a little bit of extra boost. Now, I had to make this really dramatic mid-range cut in this linear phase EQ just to create some pre-ringing. What I wanna do is turn on isolate so we can just hear this drum bus from about 125 hertz down because really bad pre-ringing from a linear phase EQ can totally wreck your transients. I'm gonna take this linear phase EQ out of bypass and listen to the kick drum lose a little bit of its transient. A little bit of its thud goes away and it sounds like it's fading in just a little bit. When it's engaged, you do lose a little bit of the kick drums, transient, and thud, and crack. And that's the main thing to watch out for with linear phase EQ. But in general, linear phase EQs are absolutely awesome. This is a free one called Spline EQ, and this is a really amazing tool. And we're going to talk more about this today, about when you'll want to use linear phase instead of minimum phase. But those are your two different kind of filters, minimum phase or regular or normal and linear phase. Now, whichever type of filter you use, most phase issues manifest in the low frequencies just because of the nature of sound. The lower the frequency, the longer the wavelength, so the more prone it is to having phase shift issues. But when we're mixing in the box, we have access to minimum phase and linear phase. So as long as you know which one to grab for which application, you'll be fine because they're both fantastic. They both have their own little drawbacks. But one of the most common things that mix engineers run into is a tiny bit of phase shift that they don't even notice. And it isn't until they do a bunch of processing that it becomes noticeable. Like if you have a kick drum and you do a steep high pass EQ on it and then you saturate it and then you compress it and then you add more EQ, you're just adding filter on top of filter on top of filter. Then you might step back and go, wow, my kick drum doesn't sound the way it used to. Or now the timing sounds a little off between my kick and bass that's usually how that happens, is you're compiling aggressive filtering on top of a sound. So my tip for that is if you're ever mixing and all of a sudden you realize that something is off, just retrace your steps. Just work your way backwards from the last moves you were making. Turn off that last EQ on the kick and then turn off the compression and then turn off the saturation and see if you hear the sound start to correct itself. And don't forget, when you're mixing in the box, you have a built-in retrace your steps button called the undo button. So you can just start clicking undo and work backwards in time until you figure out where the problem originated. And a lot of times, like I said, it's a compilation of filter on top of filter that's actually making a small problem into something noticeable. And just to recap, what do you want to listen for when it comes to phase issues? Number one, timing or sync issues between sounds. Whether that's parallel processing and you're hearing a timing issue between your parallel drum bus and your main drum bus, for example, or whether it's a timing or sync issue within a sound itself, like over-processing a kick drum until the low thud starts to sound out of sync from the transient. The second thing to listen for is a cancellation or buildup of frequencies. And this is commonly referred to as comb filtering. 
And that's usually in tiny parts of the sound, like little bits of the bass seem to be dipping out. Little chunks of frequencies seem to be fading away or jumping out, building up. Those are the two main things you want to listen for. So with all that covered, let's talk about some tools that we have in our toolbox. This is PHA 979. This tool is specifically designed to help us with phase issues. It comes with its own little correlation meter pop-out window right here. And in this one, instead of left to right, it's top to bottom. So when everything is in phase and working great and sounding great, all of your information will be on the positive top side of this line. And when information dips down below, that's when you have phase issues. And there, just by flipping the polarity of this signal 180 degrees in the left channel, we can see that now we are out of phase with itself. So let's talk about how to use these tools here. And we're gonna use the parallel drum bus as our example. So over here on the left in blue, it says drums, and on the red is my duplicate of the same channel. There's no processing on the original drum channel. And let's just hypothetically say that what I wanna do with this is do some parallel processing on the drum bus and compress the heck out of the mid frequency range. Probably not something you'd normally wanna do, but picking the mids, that's gonna make it easier for us to hear. And we're gonna start with a minimum phase EQ and we're going to isolate out just the mids on the parallel drum bus with a high pass and a low pass filter. So I'm gonna start bringing up the fader on the parallel drum bus and blending in the signal and let's take a listen. And as you can see, we don't really hear any phase issues. We just have a stronger presence in just the mids. And now I've muted the original drum bus and this is just the sound of the parallel bus where we're basically just hearing the mids. Now let's bring them both back on. Now before we get into the correlation meter, I wanna accent one of the issues with the filters. We have these gentle slopes of 6 dB per octave on each our high pass and our low pass. Let's take a listen to what happens when we steepen those slopes too much. And now we have phase issues going on. You can hear the sync issue. It sounds like it's phasing. It sounds out of time. It sounds out of sync with itself. The only thing we changed there was the slopes. Those are way too steep to be using in parallel. But if we go back to a gentler slope, we don't have a problem. These slopes do not typically cause you problems until you get above about 12 dB per octave. And I've said a bunch that I use the 24 dB per octave slope in Nova without problems, but not in parallel. That is too steep. That's gonna cause you problems. So if you wanted to do something like this in parallel, this is where you would wanna use a linear phase EQ to do this high pass and this low pass. And then you would just wanna watch out for that pre-ringing that might be compromising your kick drum or some of your transients. If you need steep slopes like this and you're running in parallel, linear phase is gonna fix that problem for you. But we're gonna leave these at 24 dB per octave and we're gonna hop into the correlation meter here and I'm gonna show you how to use one of these. Now, we know that we have phase issues, we can hear them, but they're not showing in the correlation meter. In order to get your correlation meter to show you accurate phase information, you have to pan things hard left and hard right. So I'm gonna pan the original drum bus hard left and the parallel drum bus hard right. And then when you're done making your adjustments, you put them back where you need them to be. And now if I hit play, there's the phase issues that we're hearing. Now the correlation meter can hear it as well because we've got the signals panned opposite of each other. And if I turn Nova off on the parallel bus, everything goes back to normal. No phase issue. Turn on those filters. That's what's causing the phase issue right there. It's just those 24 dB per octave slopes. Now we're gonna come back to the 979, but let's keep talking about things that can cause phase issues in parallel processing. Another thing that'll do it in parallel is just turning on some multiband dynamics. But just by nature of being a minimum phase multiband processor, it's going to create phase issues. If you're not doing this in parallel, you'll probably never notice it. But in parallel processing, it's definitely not as dramatic as Nova was, but you can hear it. Let me bypass it. Back on. 
So yes, multi-band processing of any kind with multiple filters running in parallel is very commonly a problem with phase shift and phase correlation issues. Now, the next couple tools that we have at our disposal are built right into the DAW. Now, don't forget, you have the waveform view down here of whatever sound that you're working on. So you can always use a comparison of those waveforms between two different tracks that you're working on to look at the peaks and valleys and get an idea of where any cancellation might be occurring. And built into most DAWs is a polarity flip for the phase. Now up here on the base channel, if I click those buttons and they go green, that means it has flipped the phase polarity on that particular channel. This flips the polarity 180 degrees. Now sometimes if you're having phase issues, just flipping the polarity on the channel strip will fix your problem, but usually you need something a little more detailed and specific than just doing a 180 flip, but we're getting to that. The next great tool is an oscilloscope. This is another free plugin. This is a great way to get more of a 3D image of what's going on with the polarity inside of a sound. So here's this sub bass, and you can see the phase polarity being displayed here. This kind of kidney bean shape here. Now watch what happens to it when I flip the phase back to its original polarity. And see, so you can see how it did a 180 flip. I'll go back and forth and back again. So you could watch the phase polarity flip. So as you adjust the phase, you could use an oscilloscope to get a good 3D lookout on it. I don't have time today to go into details on oscilloscopes, but back to the PHA 979 by Voxango. Now we're gonna work on phase relation between kick and bass. Here's a neat little tip for you. If you're working with a loop, you could use isolate here to hone in on the low frequencies. So here I have this set from 96 hertz down and you can set these crossovers wherever you want. If all you have is a loop that you're working with, this is how you can isolate out your kick drum. And there's the oscilloscope view of just our kick drum. And now we turn on the bass. This instance of PHA 979 is on the bass track. I have another one over here on the master bus. So I want to use the correlation meter from the master bus, but I'll actually be making my adjustments on the instance that's on the bass track here. If you have a track that's in mono, you don't have to make the left and the right adjustments. You just hit force mono. But that's the other cool thing about this plugin is it allows you to adjust phase mid and side. So now we have the bass panned hard right and the drums hard left, so we're starting to see the phase issues in the correlation meter. And you gotta remember to do the panning or you're not gonna see the issues. Now I gotta say that these little bits of phase issues that you're seeing in the correlation meter may not be a deal breaker. You just gotta use your ears to see if you even need to adjust this or if you just wanna roll with it. But that said, let's assume we wanna go ahead and fix this. So what this plugin allows us to do is adjust the timing of the bass and the phase of the bass. Now, the timing where it says delay, this is like what I talked about in the beginning. This is just changing tiny, tiny amounts. And you can make adjustments by samples or milliseconds. So you can get super, super fine tuned with this plugin. You can start nudging the bass a little forward or a little back and see if you can find a better result on the correlation meter and you just make these little fine adjustments and look at your meter and see what's going on. And then after you find something that's kind of optimal, you can go over and start actually adjusting the phase by little bits as well. And then what you'll do is adjust both of these until you have your correlation meter in its best possible situation. Now, a lot of times that's not gonna fix every phase issue, but it will fix a lot of it. And if we don't fix it, what we'll have is little bits of the bass and or kick seeming to lose a little bit of oomph or volume or punch because the polarity of the kick and bass is occasionally competing with each other. And that's that comb filtering where you have tiny bits of the frequencies that are canceling each other out. So this is how you do those minute adjustments. You do little bits of adjustments in the actual timing so they sync up better and then you can do little bits of phase shift adjustments with way more control here than you can with just the 180 polarity flip on your channel strip. So yes, this is an absolutely awesome tool. Between this, the correlation meter and the oscilloscope, you can get a really good view on what's going on with your phase. Now, let's say this was the best we were able to get it. We still have a couple issues here where it's dropping in the negative. And that brings me to my next big tip for you. 
after you dial in things with this as much as you can, what you can do is you can duplicate this bass track and you can delete everything else except those ones that are struggling. And then you can just adjust the polarity on those ones. Do everything you can on the one track and then either copy and paste these sections out or duplicate it and delete the remainders. And then you can just fix the polarity on those ones that were struggling. Now we have the phase all in positive correlation to the kick drum. And now we just highlight both of these tracks and mix them down to a new track. Problem solved. And another tip for parallel processing, instead of duplicating the drum track and processing the secondary track, it's always best if you use the mix knob here. So the dry, wet, and here it's called depth. And I know the mix knob is not really the same as traditional parallel processing. You don't get the same upwards compression effect and the perceived volume level is not the same, but when you can, if you use the mix knob, it will totally help with the phase issues. A lot of times it's a lot more helpful to have a duplicate track, but that's where linear phase plugins come in. And if the latency is causing you problems, like you put one of these on your drum bus and now your drums feel like they're coming in just a fraction late, one of the old school tricks for that would be to put an instance on all of the other tracks and just leave it not in use because the latency created will just equal out across your project. So that way everything will have the same latency and it will line up again. Now some linear phase plugins work where you can do that and put them in bypass and you'll want to check your plugin because some add the latency and bypass and some of them don't, but take that same plugin and put it on all of the other tracks so everything has equal latency and then problem solved. So just to recap our tools there, you have the polarity flip that's built into your DAW, you have correlation meters that you can find a number of free ones, and you have isolate to help isolate out frequencies. You have linear phase for multiband processing and for bus processing to run things in parallel. You have your phase alignment plugins and that doubles as a sample delay plugin. So you can move things by little bits amounts of time to help with your phase alignment. And you can also adjust the phase polarity down to very specific amounts. And then like I showed you, if you need to, you can separate out little bits of sounds that are still out of phase, process them on a separate track and then bounce it back into one. And don't forget, the compounding filtering is a huge part of the problem. If you keep stacking aggressive EQs with steep filters and compressors and multiband processing on top of each other, you're probably going to eventually give yourself a phase issue. At the end of the day, even if your computer can handle it, the more amount of plugins that you put on and the more you process something, it's not always a better thing. A lot of times less is more. Now, another thing that you can do with a minimum phase filter, if you really need to high pass something with a steep slope and it's causing you issues and the linear phase EQ is wrecking your transients, you could duplicate that track, save one of them muted and tuck it away. And with your duplicate, turn everything else off and do a nice gentle 6 dB per octave high pass and then bounce the track down. And then you could do it again and even again if you need to. So that way you can get three 6 dB per octave slopes so you don't have to deal with the phase issue of these aggressive slopes. And then if you go too far or you decide later that you need to get some of it back, you have that original track that you duplicated and tucked away and is muted and saved somewhere. But there you go. I hope that was a good breakdown for you on what to listen for and what to do about it when it comes to phase issues. And don't be scared. Be prepared. Just get to know those tools. Take the time to learn how to use them and listen to those low frequencies. Listen for any information that might be canceling out, like there's some kind of ghost EQ work on your low end. That's a big sign that you might have some phase issues that you need to address. Use your correlation meters. And I recommend getting to know the oscilloscope. That's a great 3D view view of your waveform. And don't forget, if you mix yourself into a weird spot and you don't know where the problem crept up on you, just retrace your steps and work backwards until you find where it manifested. But as frustrating as phase issues can be, every one of those problems is just something that you'll learn from and you keep moving and it just makes you a better engineer in the long run. But I appreciate you tuning in and let me know what you think in the comments and I'll catch you on the next one.